You know, Ghastly, there's gotta be a reason Team Rocket was chopping off all those Slowpoke tails. Maybe they actually taste good. It wouldn't hurt to get a nibble, right? Slow, uh, I mean, uh, uh, hey everybody, Dmod, Dmod here, and welcome back to some more Pokemon Soul Silver version. In the last episode, we took a stand against Team Rocket, who was chopping off Slowpoke tails in the Slowpoke well for a profit. Which is honestly probably one of the most evil things they've ever done, which is kind of ironic because Team Rocket's normally a complete joke, but not this time, they actually did something kind of evil. And we put a stop to that. And by defeating Team Rocket, we've also opened up the way over here to our second gym challenge, the Azalea Town Pokemon Gym. But before we go over there, there's one thing we want to check out, and that is over here, because it has been a day since I recorded last, and Kurt over here has himself some Pokeballs for us. At least he should. Ah, Zachary, I just finished your Pokeball, here. And by giving me the pink Apricorns, we get in return the Love Balls. How well, lovely. That turned out great. Try catching Pokemon with it. The Love Ball is a pretty interesting Pokeball here, and keep in mind, all the Pokeballs that you get from Kurt are only from Kurt. You will not be able to find them anywhere else besides giving him Apricorn, so these are very exclusive to only Kurt's like trade. That being said though, the Love Ball is a pretty interesting Pokeball. First of all, I like how it looks a lot. It's pink, it has that like little swirl on it, that's a heart. I don't know, I like it. I like pink. Pink's a good color. And, but more importantly, I should probably talk about what the Pokeball actually does. <laughs> This is a Pokeball that works more effectively against Pokemon of the opposite gender. So if you have a male Pokemon on the field when you're trying to catch a Pokemon, and the Pokemon you're catching is female, it'll actually have a higher chance of catching than, you know, vice versa. Which is pretty interesting. It's a very unique Pokeball, to say the least. And while we're here, we may as well give, a, give him some more Apricorns. Yeah, Apricorns for me? Fine, we'll turn them into Pokeballs. And I'm thinking we'll give him our green Apricorns because we have four of these bad boys. So, let's do that. And why does it stop, like, start the menu on no? I don't know why games do this. Of course, if I'm clicking it, I want... Yes, obviously. Anyways, they picked a side. It'll take a day for me to make a Pokeball. I'll come back for it later. There you go. And hey, the Slowpoke's back. How you doing, Slowpoke? Yeah, same. <laughs> How you feeling, girly? The Slowpoke my dad gave me came back. It still is going back, too. Okay, thank God they regenerate. Okay, town safe for good. <laughs> Doesn't it feel nice, though, re reuniting the, the lost little Slowpoke of her girl trainer? Doesn't it feel great? I feel great anyways. What's even better is over here. We have a white record that regrew really over the course of time. Because it's been a little bit since I last recorded. Because my head's been bothering me lately. So my recording schedule has been a little bit out of whack. But eh, we're pulling through. That being said though. Kurt taken care of. There's only one stop left for us to go over here. It's been a long time coming. And by a long time, I mean not really all that long. Because the last Pokemon Gym was like what? Only like... Two routes away? <laughs> anyways, let's go. Azalea Town Pokemon Gym. Our second stop. Here we are, baby. Let's do it. Yo, challenger. Bugs made this gym. It's a huge just a bug-type Pokemon. Bugs is young, but he's a master of bug-type Pokemon. It's going to be tough about my advice. Let's see here. Bug-type Pokemon don't like fire. Fly-type moves are super effective, too. And they're also, as a third type you can keep in mind, they're also weak to rock-type, which means that if you happen to have that Onyx that you can trade from in Violet City, you'll have yourself a pretty handy time here because the first two gyms are both weak to rock-type. So having the, if you start off with Chikorita, which, by the way, grass-types are also weak to bug-type, so... Yeah, if you check Chikorita, you're already off. You're down two for two in gym leaders when it comes to type advantage. So, yeah, having Chikorita, like I mentioned, is kind of the, the hard mode of this game. And the first two gems will definitely show it. So, if you have that Onyx or you caught a Geodude before to help out your Chikorita, it'll do a wonderful job here. Now I'm done rambling about that, we should probably talk about what this gym is actually about. Because this gym is actually probably the first, I cannot forget probably, it is the first gym with an actual gimmick to it. Because Falcon's gym was pretty much just walking in a straight line to where you need to go. This gym, however, has these spiders, which are based off Spinarak, which you will step on, and they will go to the nearest rope that you can go to, like this. So all you gotta do is figure out your way to go through the maze, and get your way to the end. Pretty simple stuff, but at least it's better than, you know, just walking straight forward for your puzzle, because that wasn't really a puzzle. And I don't really get it, too, because it's not like the first time this has happened. The first generation of Pokemon, the first gym, was literally just walking in a straight line to Brock. In the third generation, Roxanne, it's literally walking, not quite in a straight line, but pretty much in a straight line with no gimmicks in the way. But yeah, that's what this... A lot of the first gyms are like that. And it's nice to have a change of pace with an actual, like, you know, mechanic to it. Alright, rambling aside, here we go. And this kind of is level 12. This thing should be a Butterfree by now. What are you doing, Bugtide Trader? I don't know what you're doing with a Caterpie. But, eh, unless you just really like Caterpies. In that case, then go, go crazy. Who am I to judge? Now, a neat little fact about this gym, besides, you know, being being weak to fire, rock, and flying, is that if you have yourself a Ghastly, a lot of the Bug-type Pokemon in this gym will actually not really have a good way to hurt you, because a lot of Bug-type Pokemon, surprisingly, don't actually have a lot of Bug-type attacking moves, like, leveling up. So, 
being a ghost type is actually fantastic in this gym because most of the bug types here will either have a normal type move such as tackle or they'll have something like poison sting to try and you know poison you but you're a poison type so you resist the poison and you're a ghost type so you don't even take any damage at all from the normal type moves so yeah having a gas at this point is freaking incredible and I swear I didn't plan this out either. I was just like, you know what? I see a ghost type Pokemon, and I love Ghastly. The Ghastly family line is one of my favorite guys, like family lines of Pokemon. I want to use it on my team, and it just kind of worked out to be freaking amazing. Just goes to show you the power of ghost type Pokemon, baby. One of my favorite types. Come on. Also, this I just realized this Weedle is also randomly. This Weedle is also level 12. What are you doing? This should be a feed drill. I don't know what these trainers are doing in here, but eh, who am I to judge? Although I am kind of happy he doesn't have a Beedrill, because uh, Beedrills would be freaking terrifying. Have you ever imagined some of the Pokemon in real life? Like some of the Bug-type Pokemon? Imagine walking around and you find a Scolipede in the wild. That'd be terrifying. That thing's like 7 foot tall, I believe. It's crazy. But we're not here to talk about real life Pokemon. We're here to talk about video game Pokemon, which is why we're playing this game. I guess. Here, and now on to where the puzzle gets a little bit more complicated. We now have these levers, or levers. I don't think I've ever met anyone call them levers before, but I just did, so whatever. Both type Pokemon evolved young, so they get stronger much faster. Which is why nobody's evolving their Pokemon, is that right? <laughs> yeah, anyways, he's got three Both type Pokemon, and they're... Technically should be Kakunas, but you know what? I'll let it slide. At least it's not, like, not being a Beedra like it should be. I'll let this one slide. go and as you can see he's got poison thing here but we're a poison type so we cannot be poisoned and it's gonna do a whopping one damage so yeah if you have a ghastly you're gonna have a very very easy time in this gym and trust me the gym leader here bugs you we've heard a little bit about him but trust me on this he can be kind of nasty if you don't have a plan for him so me having this uh ghastly here is gonna be super handy and we got ourselves a kakuna which uh, is level nine all right i don't think you have a way to hurt me we're gonna find out though because you could have poison thing but there's a very good chance you're gonna only have hardened Oh no, not Harden. Ah, the humanity. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. Uh, there you go. So all these Kakunas, I'm pretty sure all the Kakunas like, of the regular trainers are pretty much only going to have Harden. So if you want to just level your Pokemon against them, it is a fantastic idea. Because trainers, like I said before, give you more XP. You guys, he's level 17. And we're going to be like level 20 by the time we leave here. Oh, he actually has a Beedrill. Wow, okay. Would you look at that? Someone actually evolved their Pokemon. And it's level 12. Look at this bug type trend. This guy should be the gym leader, judging from what we've seen so far. <laughs> but I will say, Pokemon, some Pokemon in real life would be terrifying. And Beedrill is definitely one of those Pokemon. Look at this thing. It's a giant bee with three stingers, poisonous stingers, may I add. This thing would be absolutely terrifying to find in the wild. Which is probably why all the, like, all the early ep anime episodes all had like Beedrills chasing the, like, the main character. So, at least I knew how terrifying this thing was when they made it. Well taken care of, and that should do it for this fight. Awesome. This evolving isn't enough. There you go. So now onto this game. Uh, not games. Uh, yes, this, this gym is the entire game. Okay, no. Now onto this gym's main puzzle slash mechanic. You have these levers here, which will actually deactivate and reactivate these railways. So you just gotta take a quick little look and figure out where you want to go. So if we go on it right now, we will be ending up over to the red side. So, I don't think we want to go over there. So, how about instead of that? Actually, that'll, that'll just take us to a trainer. So, actually, we do want to go over to the red side. So, let's do that. Over there, we can see our gym leader over there. That's Bugsy. Hey, Bugsy. Bye, Bugsy. <laughs> and would you look at that? We got a double battle. Something you don't really see too often in gyms. Hey, are you challenging the leader? No way. If you insist, we'll be your opponents. You guys are pretty confident four year olds. But I, too, am a confident four year old. We got Spinarak and a Lediva. Here's some more rare bug type Pokemon. I haven't seen these too often. I like Spinarak. I, I like the little face on Spinarak's back, as you can see over there. Although they're always supposed to be smiling, and this sprite kind of looks, uh, kind of sad. There we go. Uh, let's, let's, let's double target onto the Lottie Ball. Why not? I'm sure he won't mind. Is he going to knock it out? That's the question, though. Let's see. And. It lives on a pixel of HP. Holy crap. That is the luckiest Letty Bow of all time. And I get poisoned. Okay, this, this, I'm just getting unlucky right now. Holy crap. It's one of those classic cases. Whenever you're playing this game, the AI will always get their status affliction. But if you go for status affliction, you will never get it. It's just the logic of Pokemon. I don't know what it is. I think the DS has sense in it. I think it can listen to what you're saying or what you're doing. Because it happens every single time. I don't get it. 
I remember a long time ago, I don't know if this is like something you guys have ever heard of, but I remember a long time ago, a lot of people used to believe like the DS could like hear you for your speaker and it'll actually affect how the game works and stuff. Obviously just a rumor, but it's kind of funny to believe that some people actually believe in that at some point. Or was it a rumor all along? Dun dun dun. <laughs> Anyways, dumb joke aside. Lose water, you have to spin around and take it off. Not bad, okay. Oh my goodness! I feel a bit dizzy. Take care of that, and now I think we want to take this rail off. Because now this will take us over here to this red lever. And by taking out this last red one over here, this will take us right over to the gym leader Bugsy! Look at that! The magic! However, my Gassy's uh, PP is looking a little bit shaky. How many electricians do I have left? Yeah, I got two left, and it's my only, like, attacking move outside of Curse. So, uh, I think I'll be right back and go heal my Pokemon at the Pokemon Center. I'll be right back. On my way back, I got another call from good old youngster Joey. Let's see what he's going to say. Good evening, Zachary. It's me, Joey. Are you awake? Uh, it's currently 9.31 p.m. as I'm recording this, so, uh, yes, definitely. Oh yeah, I took down a wild hoo-hoo the other day. It was a cakewalk. Well, I guess it can't be helped. Us being so tough. Alright, later. Man, if he if he's so proud of bragging about taking out care of a hoo-hoo, he should have seen me in the Bellsprout Tower. I'll take them out left and right. <laughs> and holy cat, this poison effect needs to go away. Although I will admit, I do kind of... It's kind of weird, because the poison effect, it's meant to be annoying and whatnot, but since I've been playing like a lot of newer Pokemon games, it's been a while since I've like played like the older ones. I say a while, but it's only been like a year, but... I don't know. It's something kind of nostalgic about seeing it, you know? Have you guys ever had that moment when you're playing, like, an older game of yours from childhood? And, like, for something that's supposed to be annoying, but you're like, You know what? I miss this thing so much from my childhood. I kind of want to see it again. Am I going crazy? Probably. <laughs> Anyways, let's go back to Bugsy. Alright, we've made it. Bugsy's right here. And, uh, we're all healed up and ready to go. So, I say without further ado, I challenge you, Bugsy. I'm Bugsy. I'll never lose when it comes to Bug-type Pokemon. My research is going to make me the authority of Bug-type Pokemon. Let me demonstrate what I've learned from my studies. Alright, Gym Leader Bow, here we go! Bugsy! Let's get this started. Bugsy opens up with his first Pokemon of free, his Cypher, which, believe it or not, is actually his ace Pokemon. It's a rare occasion where the, the, the Gym Leader will actually open up with their ace Pokemon. Coming in at level 17 with the following movesets. This thing's main goal is going to be spamming the move U-Turn, which is a move that's pretty interesting. It is a decently powerful Bug-type move, which will make it so he has to swap out his Pokemon every time he does it. So using Curse on this thing is not a good idea right now, because he's going to be trying to switch out all the time. And in case you're curious, my mean look here will not keep him trapped in, because U-Turn will force him out. So, yeah. He also has this move called Focus Energy, which will make it so his critical hit ratio goes through the roof. So this Cypher is actually pretty freaking scary if, you're not, if you don't have a way to deal with it. But thankfully... His only two attacking moves are a U-turn and a normal type move, which I don't know the name of which one he has. I think it's Tackle. I couldn't be wrong, though. Maybe it's like, I don't know, Slash, although it seems a little powerful at this point in the game. But basically, if you have a Ghastly, there isn't too much he can do to you, because Poison type versus Bug type, as you can see right here. So, yeah. Like I said, having a Ghastly for this gym leader, or just, just gym in general, make it a cakewalk. As he brings in his second Pokemon from U-turn, Kakuna, level 15. Why this thing is not evolved into a Beedrill, I will never understand. It's level 15, but it, believe it or not, it only has one move being Poison Sting, which, again, I have a Ghastly, which means this thing can basically not touch me, because it's going to be taking no damage from me and taking punch damage from my Nightshades. And it can't even be poisoned, so yeah. Ghastly kind of freaking rules. Look at that. And I think there's going to be a good chance he's going to heal now, because starting this gym forward, gym leaders and boss battles will probably have potions, like as you can see right here. He has a super potion. So when your Pokemon will get low in HP, sometimes they'll heal up their HP, which, you know, makes sense. You wouldn't want your Pokemon to faint now, would you? Which is a little bit annoying, but we'll be fine. It's not like it hurt me back in return. Look at this. Ha ha, you're doing one damage. And that was a crit that did one damage. Holy crap. <laughs> if that didn't prove how, like, powerless he was in this situation, I don't know what will. He got a crit and did one damage. Go, Kakuna down, and a level up is gained. Level 18, awesome. Any moves? No. As he's gonna be bringing back in his Cypher, and you know what? I have no reason to switch out. We may as well stick in. Here comes Cypher once again. And if I remember correctly, the Cypher here is gonna have an item on it, being called a Citrus Berry. Which we've seen what berries are, but we haven't actually really used them in battle before. 
And basically what fairies are, they're held items for Pokemon you can give to your Pokemon, and by holding on to them, they will activate. And a Citrus Berry will heal a ton of his HP back up like this. It's pretty much like we did him with Nightshade to begin with. So yeah, Citrus Berry is kind of annoying, but not the end of the world. He's gonna U-turn once again, and it's starting to add up some damage, but we should be okay. As he goes into his third and final Pokemon here, this is Metapod. Also level 15, however, there's a cruel twist to his fate. He only has Tackle, and I'm a Ghost-type Pokemon. So this Metapod literally cannot touch me. So you know what? I'm going to be rude, and I'm going to heal in his face. Because that Cypher, even though I do resist its one attack you can hit me with, it is still kind of scary. So we're going to heal up quickly. Back up the full we go, and this Metapod, as you can see, only has Tackle, and it cannot hurt me. So if I want to, I can sit here forever and just do nothing. But we may as well take it out. Oh no, don't tackle me. Ah, the tickles. And there it goes. Yeah, like I said, if you have a Ghastly, this gym fight is completely invalidated. It's kind of crazy how well Ghastly does here. I don't think they really accounted for how good a Ghost-type Pokemon would be for, these, for this gym. But I'm not complaining. And finally, for the third and final round, it's like a boxing match. Takes three knockouts or three encounters. It's Cypher. Even though it's my last Pokemon, both Pokemon are tough. Yeah, they may be tough, but uh, they can't really be tough and you can't really hit me. So I think uh, I think we'll be just okay. Once again, and I think one more will do it. Hang in there, just a little more. Buddy, both my Pokemon are at full HP and uh, you only have one move that can hurt me. I don't think you're doing too well. He goes for your turn, will it crit? No, it only does nine damage and that's the battle. Yeah, like I said, Ghastly kind of freaking rules in this boss battle. Or just gym leader battle, whatever you want to call it. It's basically a boss battle. And just like that, we managed to defeat it. Ghastly's been the MVP in both my gym battles so far. Not bad. And it's level 19 as well. We're really flying in the levels now. And I want to learn Confuse Ray. Ooh, that's a pretty interesting move. Now don't be worried, folks. It's not that confusing of a move to understand. Confuse Ray is a very simple move, in fact. It is, in fact, probably, actually, forget probably, it is the best move in the entire game for inflicting confusion, because it has 100% accuracy that will cause confusion. It's a very, very annoying move to deal with, but on our side, it can be pretty handy. However, I don't know if I want to give out one of my moves for it, because Hypnosis puts things to sleep, which is super handy. Nightshade's my one attacking move, so we're not getting rid of that. Mean Look, like I said, is super handy for stuff down the line, so we're not going to be getting rid of that. And Curse has been surprisingly useful, so I think I'm going to actually pass on Curse. I mean, I prefer, not Curse, Confuse right. Although Confuse Ray is a very handy move in its own right, but I am going to give up on it. And there you go. Second gym defeated. Ah, oh, that's the end of it. Whoa, Mason, you're an expert on Pokemon. My research isn't complete yet. Uh, okay, you win. Take this badge. And we get the high badge from Bugsy. Hooray! Two gym badges down just like that. Do you know the benefits of the high badge? If you have it, Pokemon at the level 30 will obey you, even traded ones. Pokemon will cut will be able to use that outside of battle, too. Here, I also want you to have this. We get TM89 for our totals for defeating him, which is, if I remember correctly, U turn? Yep, it contains U turn, and I'm actually not 100% sure what TM he gives you in the original game. I kind of forget. I'll put it on screen, though, because I am kind of curious, because I legitimately forget, and U turn was not a move back then, so I'm curious. That lets your Pokemon attack and switch with the next Pokemon in your party. Isn't that great? It is actually a pretty cool move. I like U-Turn a lot. Now, before we go on forward, I just want to say, Bugsy's official art has always creeped me the frick out. If you look at Bugsy's, like, official art for this game, look at those soulless dead eyes. I don't know. Bugsy, he, he's like a super, like, I don't know, innocent kid. But then you look at his official art, and you think he's starting to look a little bit terrified. But uh, maybe that's just me. It's just something about those dead eyes, man. He's got that thousand-yard stare. It scares me. Anyways, being scared of, uh, presumably a kid around my age aside, uh, we should probably get going because we got our second gym badge and we got through that pretty easy. But even though we got through pretty easy, my guess it could use some healing. It did kind of carry the entire battle on its own. But I'm proud of you, Ghastly. In fact, how do you feel, Ghastly? How do you feel after taking on two gym leaders pretty much all by yourself? Very happy? You should be, buddy. You should be. All right, we made it out. How you feeling, buddy? Well done, that was a great clash of tri talented young trainers. For people like you, the future Pokemon is bright. Alright, and I didn't really get to show it off in the last gym because I completely forgot like an idiot. But if you go over to these statues we defeated a gym leader and check them out, 
Atelier Town Pokemon Gym. Leader Bugsy. Certified trainer. Zachary. Look, look at that. They put my name on the freaking statue because I beat him. Although it does kind of concern me that I'm the only name here. Am I the first person to beat this gym? That's a little weird. Alrighty, outside of Azalea Town Pokemon Gym. Take my word for it right now. You want to be careful how you move if you're just leaving the gym. You had a rough time in that gym. You do not want to leave for the exit of town. Trust me on this. It will save you a lot of headache if you're not prepared. Just go over to the Pokemon Center and heal up your Pokemon first. Trust me on this. All healed up and ready to go. How are you feeling, Ghastly? Singing and hubbing. I wonder what that sounds like. With your cry, it probably sounds terrifying. But I think it's kind of fitting for you. You know, you're kind of a ghost Pokemon, so I think it's kind of fitting. And oh, what else you got? Oh, I did a little dance. Oh, that was kind of cute. Ah, oh, Ghastly, I love you so much. I really love Ghost-type Pokemon. And I'm sorry, Totodile. I know I'm probably showing a lot of bias, but trust me, I love you too. I promise it's not one, it's not one way. So as I was saying, you wanted to be careful about leaving town. And the reason for that is because we're all done here. We should probably get going. But there's a twist. Look who it is. It's been a little bit. Tell me something. Is it true that Team Rocket has returned? What, you beat them? Heh, <laughs> quick lie. Are you serious? Let's see how good you are. That's right, he comes out of absolutely nowhere, counts you to a rival battle out of nowhere, right after you leave the gym if you're not careful. It is very easy to get caught off guard and get completely destroyed by him. Rival Silver liked the battle. He sent out his own Ghastly, believe it or not, level 14 with the following moveset. It seems that my rival and I have equal quality taste in Pokemon because we both love Ghastly, apparently. However, unfortunately for you, my fellow Gas Ball friend, I have Bite. How do I bite a ball of gas? I have no idea, but we're gonna try it anyways. With powerful jaws like these, anything's possible. And there we go, Gas is defeated. And he did lay a curse on me, but that just made it all the easier to take him out, so I'm not complaining. Get some experience and hit level 18. All right, not bad. Any new moves? No. Get cursed on. He's going to do some damage. Ow. And now he's starting out his starter, Bayleaf. Because believe it or not, his starter has actually evolved while mine has it. Now I feel kind of embarrassed. But anyways, this is going to be his starter Pokemon. And as always, depending on which starter Pokemon you pick, he'll have a different Pokemon here. For me, he has a Bayleaf. If you have a Cyndaquil, he will have a Totodile that's evolved. I'm not going to spoil what the evolution's name is, but it's evolved. And vice versa. Bayleaf, or whatever starter Pokemon he has, will come at the level 18 with the following move sets. Because, like I said, this will change the thing which starter Pokemon you have. And this Bayleaf would normally be kind of scary for my total battle because, you know, it's a full of Pokemon and has grass type moves now. However, thankfully, my Ghastly actually covers my total battle pretty well because I am actually resistant to grass being a poison type. So, look at that. Pretty handy. As he goes for Reflect, which is a pretty interesting move, which you don't see too often. It's an interesting move which will raise. The opponent's defense for five turns. How much does it raise their defense by, you may ask? It actually cuts the physical damage you do to your opponent by half. So it's actually a pretty scary move in some situations. However, I am Night Shade, so that doesn't matter. And she goes for Razor Leaf, which shouldn't do too much, right? Right, please. That actually did a, de that did a decent chunk for what it is. Uh, good thing I have my gas though. If I told it out only, we'd be kind of boned here. But thankfully, we made it for him. Down goes the second Pokemon. And one more. Alright. And we're almost level 20. Wow. And the last Pokemon is a Zubat. Interesting. Okay, I'm gonna go for my Total Dial then. Guys have been stealing a lot of the spotlight recently. We may as well have Total Dial stuck. Do a little bit of action here. His third and final Pokemon is a Zubat level 16. Say, you got a lot of nerve coming here. You came to me. What do you need? I didn't do anything. I'm innocent. But yeah, his last Pokemon is a Zubat, level 13, I almost said 13, level 16 with the following moveset. However, I think we'll be just fine. We took out plenty of Zubats in our time. That actually didn't do too much. And he confuses me. Oh no, this is the start of a downfall, isn't it? Right, come on, Totodile. I believe in you. I believe in the power of friendship. Yeah, there you go. Power of friendship, baby. Never fails. Fight, and it's gonna do. A, oh, that's a crowd. I was gonna say, that actually did a lot of damage. There goes some reflect. That's ridiculous. There's no way I can lose to a wimp like you. Buddy, you've already lost to me twice. Let's make it a third time, shall we? Actually, no, he's only lost to me once, because we haven't fought. Yeah, this, this is a third encounter, but only our second battle. And hey, I got to pull through the confusion and use my water gun. Alright. And he actually lives with a pixel. What is with this episode of people living on pixels? 
I don't get it, and I'm not a fan. And I don't want to knock myself out with confusion, so... Even though I hate to use a potion, because it's kind of cowardly, and my rival's going to make the fun of me for it, I'll use a potion. There you go, and does he use a potion? He does not. Alright, he is not the coward. He's fighting this out. Unfortunately for you, though, I shall be the victor in this. Unless I hit myself. Ah, oh, okay. Power of friendship can only go so far. Bye, and my HP, uh... Uh, I really don't want to get knocked out. I'll use another super potion, fine. I'll use it. Freaking, it's so taunting though. He's like living on a pixel here. He's still like, he's giving me so much trouble. He's been alive for way longer than he should be. You're at a pixel of HP, and he got another crit. Okay, he's doing everything in his power to defeat me. It's a good thing though I have items. And we have no confusion. So that should do it. All right. Just like that, I will defeat it once again. <sighs> Useless Pokemon. Listen, you, you only won because my Pokemon were weak. Weak Pokemon, you say, huh? Well, guess what? Motodal is no longer going to be weak. Actually, he didn't call my Pokemon weak. He called himself weak. But, more importantly, my Totodile is finally evolving. Because, believe it or not, Totodile actually takes quite some time to evolve compared to the other starters. But it's finally time to evolve. Do, 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 do. And there we go. Totodile has evolved into a full-grown croconaw, baby. Not bad. I <sighs> hate the weak. Pokemon trainers doesn't matter who or what. I hate to see them hanging around. That goes for Team Rocket, too. They are big and tough as long as they're in a group. I get them alone, and they're all weak. I hate them all. You stay out of my way. You won't be an exception if you get in my way. Buddy, uh, calm down. They're not even in town anymore? Jeez. <laughs> What's his problem? But yeah, believe it or not, my starter Pokemon here, Totodile, has finally evolved into a Croconaw. And normally I would talk about our starter evolution. However, we've been going on for a little bit this episode, so I think now would be a perfect time to end things off. And next time in Pokemon Soul Silver, we'll talk a little bit more about my starter Pokemon here that's evolved, along with the other starter Pokemon now that we've had our own starter Pokemon evolve. And after doing that, we'll move on forward, prove that past the Zalia Town, and keep on going with our journey, because we got more gym badges to collect, baby. That being said, thank you guys for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. And I will admit, I am kind of sad, as Zelly Town's music is going to be gone for a while. I'll return, I promise, my sweet, but it's okay. See you guys then.